Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. That day, Andrea woke early, tidied the space she called her own, and hastened to the store. Every Thursday, they distributed expired products for free, and Andrea had become adept at seizing this opportunity. As she neared an unfinished house, a faint whimper from the bushes caught her ear. Startled, she thought, who's there? Have they dumped another helpless creature? What heartless souls they are. Without a second thought, she approached, only to find a basket cradling a newborn. The sight rendered Andrea speechless. She stood frozen, her thoughts racing. Who could have left this innocent soul here? Gently lifting the baby, Andrea was greeted with a coo and a smile. Beneath the child was a note. Without pausing to read it, Andrea's instincts kicked in. She must first cater to the baby's immediate needs. En route home, she darted into the store, grabbing baby food, a bottle, and a pacifier. A nagging worry plagued her. What if someone assumes I've taken this child? Are they searching for her? Yet, the world around seemed indifferent to the sight of a ragged woman cradling a baby. Once home, Andrea swiftly changed the baby's diaper. Thankfully, an extra was in the basket and fed her. The infant soon drifted into a serene sleep. Andrea then unfolded the note to reveal a poignant message, written with care. I'm sorry, I can no longer care for my daughter. I lack the strength and means. The note was unsigned, offering no clue to the baby's identity or origin. Overwhelmed, Andrea sank into her couch, wrestling with the gravity of her discovery. Her pulse quickened, and countless thoughts swirled. Should she approach the authorities? Perhaps place the child in an orphanage? Or dare she embrace this unexpected chance at motherhood? Perhaps this was destiny's gift to her. Andrea chose to take the risk. The pull of the infant was too strong. She smelled of the sweet innocence of milk and infancy, her smiles genuine and serene. Andrea named her Esperanza, symbolizing hope. The child's presence breathed new life into Andrea, sparking in her a newfound hope for motherhood, something that seemed impossible just the day before. While Esperanza slept, Andrea dashed to the nearest discount store, purchasing gently used baby clothes, food, diapers, and even a small bathtub. That evening, with the stove warming their humble abode, Andrea bathed the baby. Emotion welled up as she felt the delicate touch of Esperanza's tiny hands and feet, the warm water splashing as she gently washed her. The little one appeared to be around six months old. She could sit up slightly and bubbled with joyful gurgles. Andrea sang her lullabies, and once Esperanza drifted off, Andrea found herself reflecting on her own past. Truth be told, Andrea's childhood was devoid of joy. In fact, it barely qualified as a childhood. Hers was a tale of survival amidst the hardships of an orphanage, haunted by the memories of her family's dysfunction, her mother's inebriated cries for sustenance, and her stepfather's cruel blows. Andrea's circumstances became so dire that concerned neighbors intervened, resulting in her placement in an orphanage at the tender age of four. Life there wasn't a walk in the park either, yet she received the basic necessities. She was a diligent student, earning the affection of the caregivers. However, this only fueled the jealousy of her peers, who ostracized and taunted her, fearing she'd be a tattletale. Andrea loathed the orphanage, crossing off days on a calendar as she awaited her emancipation. Her self-image wasn't the best. She saw herself as gangly, perpetually hungry, and clumsy. The radiant hue of her red hair and her freckles, which Janitor Vasily praised, only made her a target of mockery. Although Vasily would often remark, Oh, Andrea, your hair shines like sunlight, she would dismissively retort, Sunlight? I'm tired of being teased for being a redhead with freckles. Vasily would simply shake his head and reassure her. Upon leaving the orphanage, Andrea inherited an aging house on the city's outskirts. It wasn't much, but it was hers. Her job hunt was tough due to her lack of formal education and experience, but she eventually found work as a cafe waitress. Through sheer determination and hard work, Andrea carved out a place for herself on the team. It was here that she met Federico. The dark-eyed construction worker was instantly smitten by Andrea's fiery spirit and radiant hair. 
The two began dating, and in time, tied the knot. Though Federico wasn't wealthy, he was resourceful and skilled. He transformed Andrea's humble dwelling into a cozy sanctuary, and their life together was filled with harmony. Soon, to their mutual delight, Andrea became pregnant. Their happiness knew no bounds, and they began making plans, optimistic about their future. On the day everything changed, there were no dark omens or premonitions. Federico left for a nearby settlement to purchase lumber for the new fence they had planned to erect as the old one was deteriorating. As was customary, Andrea kissed him goodbye and hurried off to work. By evening, a gnawing worry set in, Federico had not yet returned. Thoughts raced through her mind, had there been an accident? Perhaps the truck broke down. But surely, Federico would have called. In her growing panic, she dialed his number repeatedly, only to find it switched off. Overcome with dread, Andrea called the police and local hospitals. That's when she received the devastating news, Federico had been involved in a fatal car accident. The days that followed were a blur, mourning, condolences, and an abyss of grief. Consumed by sorrow, Andrea could hardly cope, and a month after Federico's funeral, she suffered a miscarriage. It happened abruptly, in the dead of night. While the medical team managed to stabilize her, the baby could not be saved. If that wasn't enough, an ensuing infection led to complications, requiring Andrea to spend weeks in the hospital. To add to her torment, the doctors delivered heart-wrenching news. Regrettably, due to your current health circumstances, you won't be able to bear children in the future. We're truly sorry. When she was finally discharged, Andrea, heavy-hearted and bereft, yearned for the comfort of home. But as she neared her house, she was met with a gut-wrenching sight. All that remained was a smoldering pile of ashes. Everything had been consumed by fire, mementos, furniture, the very walls that had surrounded her. According to neighbors, the old wiring was the culprit. The house had, after all, stood for about a century. Lost and homeless, Andrea sought assistance from local authorities. While they placed her on a waiting list for housing, they provided no immediate solution. The curt response she received was, It was your private property, and the fire occurred due to negligence. We're not obligated to offer housing. Don't you have any relatives or friends who could shelter you temporarily? Otherwise, consider renting a place. The distraught woman made her way to the cafe where she used to work, clinging to the hope that she might be able to rent a room with her salary. But even this hope was dashed. During her husband's funeral and her subsequent hospitalization, her position had been filled by another. No one had even bothered to inform her. Desperate, Andrea implored the cafe owner, presenting her hospital documentation as proof, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Since she had been working off the books, she had no legal ground to stand on and no recourse. In a cruel twist of fate, Andrea found herself bereft of her husband, unborn child, home, and employment. It was a convergence of misfortunes that few could imagine. Despair consumed her, and she roamed the streets aimlessly, a vacant look in her eyes. She envied the purposeful strides of passers-by, all seemingly immersed in their lives. Come nightfall, she'd find herself seated on a bench, much like a stray dog, gazing longingly into the windows of strangers, catching glimpses of their bustling lives. She felt like a castaway, superfluous in a world that seemed to have moved on. She resorted to begging and sought solace in alcohol, hoping to numb her pain for a few fleeting moments. Train stations and park benches became her makeshift beds. One fateful evening, deep in an alcohol-induced slumber, Federico appeared in a dream. He pointed at her reproachfully. Don't you dare give up. What have you turned into? This isn't you. Awakening to a cold drizzle on her face and discomfort from the hard bench beneath her, she cried out in anguish. Federico, why? Why did you leave me this way? How can you reprimand me? What's left for me here? I'm a burden, unwanted by anyone. I'll end it all right here under this tree. I long to be with you. Why should I go on? For whom? For what purpose? 
As her words hung in the air, a deafening clap of thunder sounded, and a bolt of lightning split the sky, striking the very poplar tree she'd been under. It was left in two, smoldering halves. A torrential downpour ensued, blurring her surroundings. Terrified, Andrea dropped to her knees, making the sign of the cross, murmuring, Forgive me, Federico. I understand now. I'll forsake the drink. Just don't be wrathful. Dawn brought with it a newfound resolve. Andrea discovered an abandoned house on the town's fringes and inquired among the locals if she could take up residence there. An elderly woman simply gestured dismissively, saying, After hearing Andrea's story, the elderly woman, moved by her tale, gathered some items for her. Take these old beddings, curtains, and clothes. My daughter outgrew them years ago, and they aren't in style anymore. They might be of use to you. With time, things will turn around. Holding back tears, Andrea replied, Thank you for your generosity. I promise to make this house a home. Over the next few weeks, Andrea dedicated herself to cleaning and repairing the house. Her hard work and resilience endeared her to the neighbors, who began to offer her assistance. Before long, Andrea secured a job as a janitor at a nearby housing complex, giving her a stable income. The humiliations of begging were behind her. She dreamt of cultivating the neglected garden and began to budget wisely, often opting for discounted groceries. The loss of her husband still weighed heavily on Andrea's heart. He often visited her dreams, a comforting presence she felt even in waking life. Yet a profound emptiness remained, she yearned for motherhood. During her early morning shifts, she would watch parents accompanying their children to school, their hands intertwined, their conversations filled with love and concern. Her heart ached, desiring the closeness of a child of her own. Nights were the hardest, as she wept for both her lost husband and the child she'd never hold. The idea of adoption crossed her mind, but her circumstances seemed prohibitive. Fortunately, her personal documents had been spared from the fire, and she treasured Federico's photo, which she kept in her passport, like a protective charm. But as Andrea gazed at Esperanza, who was now peacefully asleep in a chair, a newfound determination welled up within her. She wouldn't part with the child, regardless of the challenges ahead. The prospect of sending Esperanza to an orphanage was unthinkable. She thought, if I keep her, I'll shower her with love and ensure she's safe, even if it means going without. But how can I get her properly documented? We can't move forward without them. The following day, Andrea, with a sense of determination, dressed in her best attire and took young Esperanza to the guardianship office. With tears in her eyes, she pleaded, please help me. This is my daughter, Esperanza, and she's six months old. I need to have her registered and obtain a birth certificate for her. The officials exchanged glances of disbelief. How is this possible? Did you not give birth in a hospital? Didn't they register her birth? How can this happen in this day and age? Taking a deep breath, Andrea responded, No, I wasn't registered. I'm homeless, and I gave birth to her on the street. It might not be common, but it's my reality. Now I have a place to stay and I intend to raise my daughter right. She needs documents to lead a proper life. After a brief discussion, the officials decided to assist Andrea. Observing her demeanors tidy, if not well-dressed, and clear of any sign of substance abuse, coupled with the fact that Esperanza looked well cared for, they felt compelled to help. They took a few months to finalize the paperwork, and once completed, they handed them to Andrea, advising, ensure you register her at the local clinic for regular checkups. Now, officially, you're a mother. Take care. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Andrea said, thank you, truly. May you be blessed. As she left the building, clutching the documents and cradling Esperanza, a surge of joy filled her heart. Federico, it feels like you've been watching over us, guiding us. There's no other explanation. Life began anew for Andrea. Every day at dawn, she'd be out sweeping streets with Esperanza nestled in her basket, sometimes dozing, sometimes babbling away. If she fussed, Andrea would pause her work, rushing to the nearest store for provisions or tending to her needs. 
The days were grueling, but a single whimper from Esperanza would reinvigorate her. The year sped by in a whirlwind of caregiving and work. Some neighbors and acquaintances, noticing the child but recalling no signs of Andrea's pregnancy, would quip, Andrea, where did this little one come from? We never saw you pregnant. With a knowing smile, Andrea would respond. Discovered her amidst the cabbage leaves. Andrea said with a twinkle in her eye. That's my girl. Perhaps my frame kept my pregnancy subtle, but she's mine through and through. As the years went by, Esperanza blossomed into a girl with an insatiable curiosity. She had a penchant for books and art, and often she'd be found helping Andrea around their humble abode. As summer waned and the scent of autumn was in the air, Esperanza was gearing up for her first day in school. Andrea, with her indomitable spirit, took up every odd job the season offered, from selling garden-fresh veggies to cleaning neighboring homes, ensuring Esperanza wouldn't feel out of place among her peers. Decked in her crisp new uniform with a fresh backpack, when Esperanza stepped into school, Andrea's eyes welled up. Oh, the joys of motherhood, she thought, feeling a pang of gratitude. If no one searched for my darling, it's their loss. She was destined for me. One crisp afternoon, the air filled with the scent of fallen leaves, Esperanza returned home, her little face a palette of mischief and mystery. Mom, she began hesitantly, her eyes darting towards the hallway where her coat was still draped over her, would you be terribly mad if I showed you a little secret? Andrea, ever the curious soul, responded with bemusement, well now, let's see what's got you so animated. Show me, dear. From beneath the folds of her coat, Esperanza gently revealed a waifish gray kitten, its big eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and fear. Its pitiful meow echoed softly. Esperanza's voice trembled with passion, the boy's mom. They found him near school and, and they were so cruel. Lobo even tied a can to his tiny tail. I couldn't bear it. I had to save him. Can we, can he stay? Andrea, her heart swelling with pride, hugged the kitten close, feeling its fragile heartbeat. Oh, my love, of course he can. You've done a beautiful thing today. This little one needs a name, though. With a twinkle mirroring her mother's, Esperanza declared, Zorro. He'll be our little warrior. As they settled Zorro with some warm milk, the kitten, sensing safety and warmth, promptly curled up on Esperanza's lap, purring his gratitude. Rest now, Zorro, Esperanza whispered gently, stroking his fur. You're home. And one day, you'll be our fierce mouse hunter. Interrupting their tender moment, Andrea softly chimed, lunchtime, darling. The soup's about to lose its warmth. Esperanza, placing a gentle finger to her lips, whispered, just a bit longer, mom. Let Zorro dream. With soft eyes, looking at the peacefully slumbering Zorro on her lap, Esperanza whispered, Mom, Zorro's just found solace in his dreams. Can he linger a little longer? Do forgive me, but how could I possibly disturb him now? Just a moment more, promise? A tender smile touched Andrea's lips as she ran her fingers through Esperanza's hair. Take your time, sweet girl. We can always reheat the meal. Thus, the symphony of their lives now had a new, playful note named Zorro. Whether it was chasing after balls of yarn or basking in the sun, the small home resonated with the laughter and purrs of their new family member. One crisp evening, as the aroma of a freshly cooked meal wafted from the kitchen, Andrea's focus was suddenly diverted from her cooking. A parade of cars, quite out of place in their humble surroundings, pulled up. From the most regal of them, a man emerged, knocking lightly on the window before proceeding to the gate. Cautiously, Andrea peered out, her heart skipping a beat. The silhouette bore an uncanny resemblance to Federico, her late husband. The man, sensing her unease, began, greetings. You are Andrea, I presume? I am Victor, Esperanza's biological father. May I enter? We have matters to discuss. Andrea, her heart pounding, gasped, Federico? My love, I thought. I believed you were gone. Is this an apparition? A cruel trick of my mind? 
Overwhelmed by the rush of emotions, Andrea swooned, collapsing at the entrance. When she next opened her eyes, the concerned face of Victor hovered over her. He was patting her face gently, a hint of panic in his eyes. Catching his breath, he exclaimed, I'm so relieved you've come around. I'm not Federico, I assure you. My name is Victor. Perhaps I bear some resemblance, but it's purely coincidental. Are you all right now? Andrea's fingers danced across the tender spot on her temple. With a soft sigh, she looked deep into the stranger's eyes and murmured, It's not that I think you're a figment of my imagination. You, you bear an uncanny resemblance to my late husband, Federico. Her voice trembled, I must show you. From the depths of her worn passport, she retrieved a photograph, which she handed over with trembling hands. The stranger's gaze sharpened, and his face turned a shade paler as he gazed at the image. This, this defies all reason, he breathed, stunned. Our resemblance is striking. This isn't just a twist of fate. I now grasp the depth of your shock earlier. His eyes softened. Forgive me for startling you. Where is the young girl? My explanation is due, she's my child. With a defiant lift to her chin, Andrea shot back, whatever mystery you wish to unravel is yours alone. As far as the world and its laws are concerned, Esperanza is mine. Every beat of my heart belongs to her. Now, I suggest you leave. Her voice was firm, but tinged with distress. I've revealed more than I should, and I have a meal to prepare. Gently but firmly, she ushered the man out, silently battling the tempest of emotions within. To think I was visited by a ghost. And this stranger, asserting his claim on my Esperanza. Where was he during all these silent years? Bursting into our lives from the shadows. But I will stand my ground. She is mine in every way that matters. Soon, the sound of Esperanza's laughter washed over her, recounting tales of her day, gleefully slurping down the warm cabbage soup. Andrea's heart warmed, every moment with her daughter infused her soul with purpose and joy. The days passed. One cold Sunday, as snowflakes danced from the sky, Andrea and Esperanza were outside, laughing as they attempted to place a rebellious carrot nose on their snowman. The distant hum of a car engine grew louder, and once again, the familiar stranger appeared. This time, he came bearing a beautifully wrapped package and a lush, fragrant Christmas tree. Andrea, instead of a welcoming greeting, muttered unfriendly words. Oh, it's you again? What do you want now? I thought I made myself clear last time. Victor, undeterred by Andrea's icy demeanor, greeted them with a warmth that juxtaposed the winter chill. Greetings, all. May I step in? I come bearing gifts, almost like a wintry fairy tale. Might I join you? With a magician's flourish, he deftly affixed the carrot to the snowman's face. Esperanza's eyes danced with delight. You have a craftsman's touch. I'm Esperanza, and beside me is my mother, Andrea. Presents are among my favorite things. Mother, why this frost towards our guest? See how he's brightened our day with that tree? In the face of her daughter's gleeful enthusiasm, Andrea's resistance melted away. She gestured a resigned invitation, much like a leaf succumbing to the autumn wind. Victor's gaze flitted between the two, admiration evident. Andrea, with her fiery locks and sparkling emerald eyes, held an allure far more genuine than the masked sophisticates he often encountered. Beneath her unassuming attire, there was an undeniable grace. Esperanza, with the same fiery charm, mirrored a love and respect for her mother that was palpable. In them, Victor saw an authentic bond, something that often eluded his own opulent world. As Andrea ushered them to the dining area, her eyes silently pleaded with Victor to tread carefully to protect the innocence of the moment from the looming shadows of the past. The spread was humbly yet rich in love, a hearty vegetable stew followed by fragrant pastries. Coupled with Victor's contributions, the table was a visual and olfactory feast. As they ate, Victor's voice, filled with genuine appreciation, broke the thickening silence, Andrea, in my life, I've indulged in the finest of cuisines, from exquisite lobsters to the rarest caviars. Yet, 
This stew, prepared with love and care, surpasses them all. Thank you for this genuine feast. But Andrea, lost in a tumult of thoughts, barely registered the compliment. The looming question tugged at her heartstrings. Could he truly be Esperanza's father? Time might reveal truths that could shatter our world. If the winds change, might I lose her forever? After lunch, the man started giving out presents. Esperanza squealed with joy when she saw the genuine, expensive Barbie doll and a huge bag full of candies and sweets. Victor handed a small red box to the woman and said, This is for you, a heartfelt gift. But Andrea pushed it aside without even looking and whispered, I'm not Esperanza, I'm not a seven-year-old. Don't try to appease or buy me off. I know why you've come. I won't give my daughter to you, don't even dream about it. Now, let's decorate the Christmas tree so that Esperanza doesn't get upset, and please, leave. Victor also whispered, All right, I'll leave, but only after we talk. Otherwise, it's no use. I need to tell you many things. I hope, after that, you'll change your mind. They all continued to decorate the fluffy Christmas tree, hanging ornaments and garlands that Victor had brought. Esperanza was thrilled with the colorful, shimmering balls since all those years. They had only had a modest fir branch decorated with candies and cotton. Then the girl asked, Mommy, can I quickly run to Rebecca and tell her everything? I can't wait. She'll be so jealous, especially when she sees my Barbie. She doesn't have one like that. She always mocks my old doll. Andrea smiled. Sure. But don't take too long. Be back home for dinner. And don't even think about going out by yourselves, especially to the river. The ice is still thin. You could drown. The girl solemnly promised not to go anywhere without asking and happily ran off to her best friend. The woman let out a sigh of relief and said to the guest, I'm all ears. Now tell me everything you wanted and then leave once and for all. Victor sat on the couch and began quietly. It will be a long conversation. Let me start from the beginning and about Esperanza. So, my name is Victor Montero. I'm the son of a wealthy businessman. Naturally, I had everything I could wish for and even more in my childhood. My father is a good man, but he raised me strictly. He made sure I studied diligently and didn't engage in any inappropriate activities. However, my relationship with my mother was always tense. It's like she hated me from an early age. I felt hurt and couldn't understand why she treated me that way. When I was in college, I met Paulina. She was an orphan and worked at a local car wash. We fell deeply in love. However, my parents disapproved. Well, my father was surprisingly neutral, saying it was my life and my choice. But my mother threw tantrums and did everything in her power to break us up. Still, I went against her wishes, and Paulina and I decided to get married. Everything was going well until a week before the wedding, when she disappeared, vanished into thin air. She didn't answer my calls, and I searched everywhere, but all in vain. That's what happened. Many years have passed, but I still couldn't forget Paulina. I pursue my passion in my work, but my personal life has never worked out. I haven't found the right person. Recently, my mother fell seriously ill, a severe illness, and she decided to tell me the whole truth. It turns out, Paulina didn't run away at all. Instead, my mother came to our rented apartment and started weaving lies, claiming that I already had a fiancé and a wedding was imminent and Paulina was just a fling. She threatened her, saying that she would ruin her life if she didn't leave mine forever, and so on. When I found out about this, I was furious, to the brink. I decided to find out what happened to Paulina. What's her fate? I thought if it's not too late, I should go and repent, explain everything. I hired a private detective who found out everything for me. He told me that after my mother drove her away, Paulina moved to the outskirts, rented a room at first, then found out she was pregnant with my child, and she gave birth. I even saw the record of the child's birth at the hospital. But according to the neighbors, the child disappeared. They haven't seen him or Paulina since then. 
Paulina herself fell into a prolonged depression, started drinking heavily, and seemed to spiral down due to everything she had gone through, and then died from alcoholism. The detective found her grave, and I sometimes go there. He is a true professional in his field and made every effort to find the daughter. First, he checked all the orphanages, but the girl was not there. Then, he hypothesized that Paulina might have left the child somewhere near her home. By piecing together small clues, he discovered that you, Andrea, suddenly had a six-month-old daughter, although the neighbors claimed you were never pregnant. It all matched up when he compared the time of Paulina's delivery and when your daughter appeared. The baby was about six months old at that time. Considering that you lived very modestly and even in a rundown house, the possibility of adoption is ruled out. No one would have given you a child, forgive me for saying so. So, I am absolutely sure that Esperanza is my daughter. She also bears a resemblance to me. Just look at her, the same brown eyes and curly black hair. Only her nose and facial features resemble Paulina. I can see it. I insist on a genetic test. Let's do it to erase any doubts. Please, don't think that I want to take your daughter away or challenge your motherhood. You fear that, right? But don't worry. I just want to meet my daughter, be involved in her upbringing, and help her. It will benefit both of us. I see how difficult your life is. Is it fitting for a girl to grow up in such conditions? Please, don't push me away. I beg you. Just like for you, the arrival of a daughter in my life is a ray of hope. Such happiness. So, don't deprive me of it. Andrea listened without interrupting and was astonished at how the fate of this poor Paulina intertwined with her own. She felt immense pity for this broken woman. After all, she was not at fault in anything. No one extended a helping hand in time. Moreover, Victor was not such a villain. He didn't know anything. And she had treated him so harshly, threw him out the first time they met. She replied softly, forgive me, I didn't know all the details. Well, if it's all true, then, of course, let's do the genetic test. But please understand, I didn't steal the baby. I found her in a basket and was overjoyed. I didn't want to send her to an orphanage. I'm an orphan myself, and I know how terrifying and bad it is there. I am childless after a miscarriage, so I was happy to have found a daughter. Admittedly, we don't live in luxury, that's true, but I try to buy her new things, even if they are not expensive. I work as a janitor and sell vegetables from my garden at the market, all for the sake of my little girl. I wasn't always destitute. I had a beloved husband, Federico, our own home, and together we did the repairs there. I got pregnant, and then... She suddenly choked up and burst into tears, covering her face with her hands, unable to cope with her memories. Victor continued quietly, I know, the detective told me everything about you. You have also had such a difficult and broken fate. Andrea wiped away her tears and asked, what about the resemblance between you and my late husband? Did you find out anything about that? It troubles me. Victor continued, yes, I found out everything. My mother recently confessed everything. It turns out she was already married before my father and had twins, my brother and me. But they divorced shortly after and they decided to split everything amicably, including the children. Her first husband, Nicholas, was supposed to leave the city, so my brother and I would never meet. Isn't it sacrilegious? How could one come up with such a thing? To separate twins? Prevent them from seeing each other and communicating? However, Nicholas didn't stay long in an unfamiliar city and soon returned home. So, it turns out that your husband, Federico, was raised by my father alone, and they lived poorly, just scraping by. Meanwhile, my mother married a millionaire, my stepfather. When I found out about this, I was so furious, I can't forgive my mother for not helping her other son, why she never told me anything, how could she have such a heart of stone to cause so much harm? To ruin so many lives at once? Every day she has delicacies for breakfast, not worrying whether her own flesh and blood is hungry right now. Couldn't she just communicate, be humane, and caring? 
she admitted why she treated me so coldly in childhood. I was a constant reminder of her sin. But what now? She has cancer, and her life is measured in months, so what's the point of blaming her? I guess it's her punishment for everything she has done. Andrea was shocked, tears streamed down her cheeks, and she couldn't utter a word. She looked at Victor and remembered her Federico. It seemed as if he was standing before her, alive. Just reach out. She wanted him to hug her, to hold her like before, to caress her red curls and whisper, You are my sunshine, my little treasure. Late in the evening, when Esperanza had already fallen asleep, the woman took Victor's gift in her hands. She carefully unwrapped it and gasped. Inside was a stunning mint-colored dress made of a soft and pleasant material. Andrea couldn't resist and tried it on. She looked in the mirror and admired herself. It suited her green eyes perfectly and fit her figure perfectly. She twirled dreamily in front of the mirror, then took it off and sighed. It's a great dress. But where would I wear it? Cleaning yards or washing entrances? Oh, my wretched fate. Nevertheless, her heart felt warm from the fact that Victor cared not only for her daughter, but also for her. She had already forgotten what it was like to receive attention from a man. And she worried, I'm ungrateful, I didn't even say thank you. Victor conducted the genetic test, and it confirmed that Esperanza was his daughter. From that moment on, Andrea and Esperanza's lives turned upside down, becoming like a beautiful fairy tale. Victor bought a well-appointed apartment specifically for his daughter, and Andrea moved there with her. She no longer worked as a janitor, Victor made her a secretary in his company. But before that, like a storyteller or magician, he worked on Andrea's image and took her to a beauty salon, saying to the girls, make her shine like the brightest star. Life smiled upon Andrea and her daughter, and their days became filled with happiness and joy. The hardships of the past gradually faded away in the light of this newfound love and care. Dear ladies, your task is to provide this woman with the maximum pleasant sensations and do everything as she desires. Oh, my. Andrea felt like she was on cloud nine with happiness. She completely relaxed and entrusted herself to the skillful hands of the cosmetologists. She thought to herself, not long ago, I was sleeping on a bench in the rain, thinking my life was over. And now, I'm in a fashionable salon, living in a luxurious apartment, having a good job, and my beloved daughter. Life is such an unpredictable thing. When the woman looked at herself in the mirror two hours later, she was amazed. Instead of a tired, 35-year-old beggar worn out by life and heavy work, she saw a sophisticated and respectable lady. They gave her a beautiful hairstyle, trimmed her bangs, refreshed her face with a mask, applied light daytime makeup, and a gentle manicure. In the adjacent clothing salon, they picked out several dresses and stylish trouser suits, along with matching shoes and accessories. She had never felt like such a queen. Waiting for her in the car, Victor whistled when she finally emerged from the salon. His heart raced at the sight of such a beauty. He couldn't hold back and said, Oh, Andrea, you look so splendid. I think I've fallen in love, completely and irrevocably. The woman blushed. She found the compliments very pleasant and replied, Oh, come on. Thank you for everything, Victor. You are like a genie, like a kind wizard who burst into our lives, mine and Esperanza's, and painted it with bright colors. I couldn't have dreamed of a father like you for her. She has grown so attached to you, maybe it's time to tell her the truth? Victor took her hand, looked into her eyes, and said tenderly, Andrea, listen. Our destinies have become so tightly intertwined, and Esperanza has bound them firmly. How do you feel about us becoming one family? I wouldn't mind it. I believe Esperanza wouldn't mind either. What do you say? I won't force you, but I really want to raise our daughter together. I miss her so much and count the seconds until our next meeting. The woman froze, her legs even trembled. She had a strong liking for Victor as he was the spitting image of her late husband, and as a person, he was excellent. Generous, caring, he was the kind of husband one could only dream of. Was all of this really happening to her? With a trembling voice, she replied, I agree. 
Let's give it a try. We just need to somehow prepare our daughter. How do we tell her all this? I can't imagine. Victor answered, I believe in always telling the truth to everyone, so we need to be straightforward. Esperanza is a clever girl. I think she will understand everything. In the evening after dinner, Victor finally mustered the courage and approached Esperanza, who was diligently doing her homework, and said, Esperanza, we need to talk to you. Your mother and I have decided to get married because I am your real dad. We love each other and want to take care of you together. After all, you are our little son and beloved daughter. How do you feel about that? With bated breath, Andrea watched Esperanza, her heart pounding with apprehension. Would the revelation shatter the world she had so carefully constructed for her daughter? But, instead of tears or confusion, Esperanza's face lit up like the morning sun. She raced into Victor's waiting arms, exclaiming, I had this feeling in my heart. You were the kind soul behind that enchanting doll, weren't you? Does this mean we're like the families in storybooks? With grandparents who tell tales by the fireplace. Victor's laughter, rich and heartfelt, echoed in the chilly air. Absolutely, he whispered, pressing a tender kiss on Esperanza's forehead. Tomorrow, my love, you'll meet a grandfather who has traveled the world and will regale you with tales of his adventures. You're going to adore him. Andrea, her fears melting away, wore a smile as warm as summer. All right, newfound family, she chimed, hands washed, and to the table. Once lessons are complete, how about a spirited game of bingo? The room echoed with laughter as they all signaled their eager agreement. They then proceeded to the heart of the home, the dining table, unified in a newfound happiness. For Andrea, it felt as if she had been transported back to a time when life was simpler and sweeter. The weight of past sorrows seemed to lift, replaced by the euphoria of the present. The world now held a hue of promise, and Andrea reveled in the newfound harmony. Esperanza, now attending a prestigious school with an emphasis on mastering the English language, shone brilliantly, her potential evident in every accomplishment. Andrea too found her stride, transitioning seamlessly into her new role. Though the early days were filled with mountains of paperwork and occasional missteps, she eventually flourished, becoming an indispensable asset. And Victor, every evening, would race home, drawn by the allure of a loving family and the tantalizing aromas of a home-cooked meal. Andrea was the bedrock of their newfound happiness, her patience and grace a guiding light. Late at night, in the quiet moments, she would send silent thanks to Federico. Thank you, my love, she'd whisper to the stars, for watching over me, guiding me to Victor, and ensuring that love always found its way home. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.